Are you waiting for hip surgery? It feels as though your life has ground to a halt. You're in pain, exhausted and feeling lousy. We all know that the NHS is on its knees and that waiting lists have gone through the roof. I did a video last year on how you can help prepare yourself for surgery whilst you're waiting. Looking at what's happening now, I'm sure it's time that we revisited it. What's made me think about this again is the publication of a paper in the Bone and Joint Journal. It's from a team in Edinburgh who looked at what happens to people who've been waiting for a hip or a knee replacement for more than six months. It's pretty grim, to be honest. They looked at a cohort of 326 patients with an average age of 68, and they asked some questions about their physical and mental health. They were particularly interested to know if people became frail whilst waiting for surgery. Frailty is an age-related process of losing one's reserves, so that you're more vulnerable to having a bad outcome if something goes wrong. They found that two-thirds of patients perceived that their health had deteriorated whilst they were waiting for surgery. Over half of them had become more frail. You might think that this is pretty obvious, but it's not something that's been looked at in this much detail before. As a hip surgeon, I see lots of people with arthritis, and many of them have been waiting months to get an opinion, let alone having surgery. The implications of this study are clear. If you have a painful hip or knee and are waiting for joint replacement surgery, you really ought to get on with it as soon as possible. This, of course, is easier said than done when the NHS is facing its worst crisis in living memory. If you're waiting for hip surgery, what can you do to help get through this difficult time and prepare yourself for surgery? Keeping as fit and as healthy as possible will help to reduce the risk of complications after your operation and they'll certainly make your rehabilitation much more straightforward. Watch my videos on nutrition and exercise for more help. First of all, think about your general health. If you're overweight, it's really important to try and lose a bit before surgery. Don't set an impossible goal, as it will just make you unhappy. Every pound you lose will mean that surgery is a bit safer and you'll find it easier to get going again after your surgery. Bond. James Bond. Stop smoking. Smoking increases the risk of heart attacks, strokes and wound problems. So really give it your best shot to give up. The NHS website has lots of advice on this, so please have a look at the links below. Cutting back on the booze is always a good idea. You'll sleep better and feel much more inclined to doing exercise. Try to do a little bit of exercise every day, even if it's only for a few minutes. It will help to improve your cardiovascular fitness and make your recovery much easier. Don't neglect your upper body exercises. You'll need to use crutches after surgery, so it's really important to have some strength in your arms and shoulders. If you have a look at the Versus Arthritis link below, you'll find some excellent resources. Think about what support you're going to need after your operation. You might want to recruit friends and family to help when you get home. Do you want to have a bed downstairs whilst you recover? This would be the time to do it. Some of my patients choose to go to residential care for a week or two after surgery. If this is something you'd like to do, have a look at some local care homes and rehab centres. I can point you in the right direction around here. Finally, have a look at the Joint School app. It's a fantastic online resource where you'll find loads of information and advice about managing your symptoms whilst you're waiting for surgery. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you'd like some more advice. Thanks for watching.